हेलो व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू दी टूडेज कोर्स ऑफ इंट्रोडक्टरी प्लांट पैथोलॉजी एक्चुअली प्लांट पैथोलॉजी इज द स्टडी ऑफ द ऑर्गेनिज्म एंड द एनवायरमेंटल फैक्टर्स व्हिच कॉजेज ए प्लांट डिजीज इट इज द स्टडी ऑफ मैकेनिज्म बाय व्हिच ए प्लांट इज कॉज डिजीज एंड मैथड्स ऑफ मैनेजिंग द प्लांट डिजीजेज इन द फील्ड्स the science of plant pathology is not very old it is almost 150 years now it is completing of its birth plant pathology is a basic as well as a science of applied in nature according to the estimations it has been understood that the pests complex create losses of about 36.5% worldwide in a year and for plant diseases it has been estimated that it causes the losses of 14.1% because of the plant diseases the birth of the plant pathology during 15 year period 1 million irish died of disease and starvation and another 1.5 million left for the us or canada due to irish famine in the year 1845 the scientists of the time were unable to save the crops but there came an understanding of the plant diseases because of their ignorance about the diseases about the etiology of the pathogen about the causal organism of the pathogen they could not identify that what is the basic reason behind uh, the disease which is causing havoc and uh, expressing it in the form of an epidemic anton d bari the german botanist he performed experiments and proved that it is because of a fungus which is causing blight in the potato and out of his experiences and experimentations we could come to know that there is a disease triangle which is of susceptible plants virulent pathogens and the suitable favorable environment plant pathology is also a very vast subject and it interfaces with so many other subjects of Uh, sciences like botany like microbiology biochemistry molecular biology nematology entomology and so on thus the plant pathology is a very very interdisciplinary science and uh, we must know that all these subjects they play a very vital role in developing the plant pathology as a subject now the point comes that what is the healthy plant healthy plant is the plant which produces its yield to its full genetical ability but whenever this healthy plant is confronted with any sort of pathogen then it is called disease plant and disease is as we know occurred by means of three factors that is susceptible host that virulent pathogen and the favorable environment when all these three things are there only then the disease will appear in the field the visible changes is experienced in the plant by way of the symptoms or the signs and by seeing these changes we can see that the plant is diseased by a particular type of pathogen or a particular type of disease now we come to the definition of plant disease we have seen that a number of definitions have been suggested by different workers and different phytopathological societies but according to encyclopedia of plant pathology 2001 the definition of plant disease is 
a harmful alteration of the normal physiological, biochemical and morphological development of a plant that results in abnormal morphological and physiological changes. And these physiological changes are expressed in the form of symptoms. Now, I am showing you the symptoms of certain diseases by which we can see that what type of pathogen or causal organism is there uh, which is causing disease. And first we see the alternaria leaf spot of the tomato plants. You see that leaves are totally infected with the pustules or the leaf spots of the alternaria which is causing the disease. It is a fungal disease. Sarcospora leaf spot are causing uh, the disease in the groundnut. Then third is the powdery mildew. You see the powdery patches on the leaves of the cucurbits. And another, I am giving you the examples of pearl millet diseases, which are very, very important in mostly the desert areas. Downy mildew which is caused by Sclerospora graminicola. As you are seeing in the picture, the ear heads of the downy mildew are being transformed into the leafy structures. Secondly, it is the leaf blast. Leaf blast is very, very important disease nowadays because it is infecting almost all the newly developed lines of Bajra. And thirdly, it is the ergot, which caused a great havoc in 70s due to his poisonous alkaloids also and by consuming those alkaloids so many livestock and uh, uh, human beings were also suffering due to toxicity of those alkaloids and ergot is having these two types of symptoms in which one is the honeydew symptom and second is the sclerotial symptoms which are there in the slide and the last time showing you is the stem rust. Stem rust which caused a great havoc in the wheat areas and still it is a great enigma for the breeders as well as plant pathologists. It is caused by Paxinia triticae. Secondly, I am discussing here the bacterial diseases in which I think citrus canker which is caused by Genthomonas citri is a very very common site in our market. If we go today in market, we will find a lot of citrus fruits suffering and infected with the Xanthomonas citri, that is citrus canker. You see here the leaves showing the spots and insect is the fruit which is showing the symptoms of the corky Xanthomonas. Secondly, we are showing the angular leaf spot of the cotton. Cotton is a very, very important cash crop of our region. In India, it grows in a large number of areas and angular leaf spot that is also caused by Xanthomonas citri species Malvicerum is an important pathogen of the cotton crop. Thirdly is the lima bean spot which are also showing uh, the watery spots, brownish spots of Xanthomonas or Pseudomonas bacteria. Third are the nutritional deficiencies in plants. So many nutritional deficiencies like zinc deficiency, iron deficiency and other magnesium deficiency. There are lots of deficiencies in the crop plants and they cause so many problems and actually they lose the crop by means of these shortcomings of the trace elements. And iron deficiency in maize is shown here. Similarly, the zinc deficiency in tomato is also seen with prominence. Then I am discussing here the areas of studies in plant pathology. Plant pathology, we study etiology. Etiology means we want to know the causes of the uh, pathogens, the biology of the pathogen and the taxonomy of the pathogen, that from which class, which group, which family the particular pathogen belongs to. And then the epidemiology. Epidemiology means how the disease is spread. What are the physical factors like temperature, humidity, rainfall, sunshine, which affect the development 
and perination of the disease in the field. Then the very most important thing is the disease cycle. By way of studying the disease cycle, we can see that how the disease is perinating, how it is perpetuating in the field in the long run on a particular crop and how we can intercept the disease occurrence by spraying certain pesticides or fungicides or using certain organic um, materials to control the disease. Then comes the forecasting. Forecasting is the science which tells us that how much temperature, how much rainfall, how much humidity will be there in the environment at a particular time and what measures we should take to curb the appearance of the disease so that we can do that forehand. Because in plant pathology there is a principle that prevention is better than cure. If we prevent the disease to come on the crop, it is always better because if a disease comes to a plant, it infects to a plant, then it is very difficult to manage and control it. But if we do prehand and uh, approach by using certain fungicides or certain pesticides, we can manage the crops at a particular economic loss level. Then comes the control. Control means there are certain principles of disease control and by using those principles and using those technologies, techniques and methods, we can manage the disease in the field successfully. Then causes of plant diseases. Plant pathology is the science of that studies causes development and control of plant diseases and disorders. We call disorders to those abiotic diseases which are caused by physical factors and other physical things. Otherwise we call disease. So the diseases are caused by microorganisms or pathogens. They are biotic in nature whereas the disorders uh, are caused by adverse environmental factors. It is a science with practical goal to develop information, material and technique which can be used to finally manage the disease and to make the, reduce the losses in the field. It is the art that is actually gathered by information, material and technique and its application that is important and which is an art for applying the knowledge for managing the disease in the field. It helps to increasing yields and quality of plants and plant products with reduced environmental pollution because this is uh, also we should uh, have in our mind that by spraying so many fungicides and chemicals in the field there is a problem of pollution and we should have a check over those things and only the judicial use of fungicides or pesticides should be made to make it more convenient, efficient and environment friendly. The losses from the disease can occur from the time of seed, sowing to the field, harvesting and storage. The importance of any subject is realized when there is a problem in that particular area. And in this way, we found that important uh, historical evidences of plant diseases are there. Irish famine due to late blight of potato in Ireland in 1845. Bengal famine due to brown leaves spot of rice in India in 1942. Coffee leaf rust in Sri Lanka in 1967. Bacterial blight of rice in 1963 at Bihar in India and southern corn leaf blight in 1970 in USA. They are such an epidemics which had left the effect on the economy of the affected countries. Then I am showing you the slides of those pathogens which have caused epidemics in the past. And they have all been caused by the fungal pathogens. 
here it is the late blight of potato which is responsible for causing epidemic in potato in Ireland. You see the healthy potato plants, you see the damaged crops in the field, this is the blighted leaves of the potato, blight affected plant, it is visible. Then the potato you see the fruit, it is affected completely by the pathogen and it has taken a dark shape and it is the phytophthora infestans, the causal organism. It is the sporangia you are seeing here which are causing the main role. Brown leaf spot of uh, rice is the another uh, epidemic which we have witnessed in India in Bengal as a Bengal famine in 1945. It is caused by Helminthosporum oryzae and you see the brown leaf spots on the rice, affected rice panicles, affected rice seeds and Helminthosporia oryzae is the causal fungus as you see it. Now the coffee leaf rust. It is also caused by a fungus, Hemilia vestatrix. You see the orange rust pustules on the uh, below side of the uh, coffee leaves. Then it is the uridospores on the leaf. It is very, very prominent here. Then affected and healthy berries of coffee you are seeing here. And the red blooming of the berries are here, whereas the affected berries have become dark and uh, black in color. Whereas the uridospores of Hemilia vestatrix is seen in orange color here. Now, I want to say that uh, it is not only the economic loss which has been occasioned by these pathogens, but during the epidemics, so many artists and photographers have witnessed those uh, scenes and it has made an influence on them also. To, I would say, that it is the socio-cultural uh, effect of the plant diseases and epidemics which are seen here in the form of such classic photographs and paintings drawn by those times uh, by different painters and artists which are showing the misery and agony of the persons who suffered due to these things. Now, disease causing agents. As uh, we have discussed earlier that there are two types of disease causing agents. One are the biotic regions, there are the abiotic regions. Under the biotic uh, causing agents, fungi, bacteria, nematodes, insects, and besides this, the vertebrate pests like birds, rodents, other animals are also there, and plant viruses, nowadays mycoplasma, rickettsi, and these things are also have come up at a great level. And under the abiotic or non-parasitic, non-infectious diseases, low and high temperature or moisture, deficiency diseases and excess of nutrients, lightning injury, injurious atmospheric gases and greenhouse effects which are now coming as a climate change are witnessing the diseases in the plants. Proof of the pathogenicity. This is one of the very, very important aspects in plant pathological studies. Uh, Robert Koch actually established four essential procedural steps called popularly known as postulates. It is known as Koch postulates for the correct diagnosis of a disease and its actual causal agent. So these are the recognition that is the pathogens must be found associated with the disease in the diseased plant. The symptom of the disease should be recorded. Second, isolation. The pathogen should be isolated, grown in pure culture in artificial media. The cultural characteristics of the pathogen should be noted. Third is the inoculation. The pathogen of pure culture must be inoculated on healthy plant of same species or variety. It must be able to reproduce disease symptoms on the inoculated plant identical to step one. And then fourth is the re-isolation. The pathogen must be isolated from the inoculated plant in culture media. Its cultural characteristics should be similar to those noted in step two. Only by this way we can establish that particular pathogen has caused this particular disease. Then the causes of plant diseases. The word pathogen can broadly be defined as an agent that incites disease in an organism or host. 
the ability of a pathogen to cause disease is known as pathogenicity and that also decides the actually the virulence of the pathogen disease is a symptom caused by the invasion of the pathogen that is able to survive spread and perpetuate now to pay our homage and to our reverence to the champions of plant pathology i have tried to show some pictures of the great uh, masters champions of the subject here the anton d bari who is known as the father of plant pathology robert koch who have given us the koch postulates and as we know padma vibhushan uh, norman borlaug who uh, won the nobel prize for peace in 1970 he is also a member of plant pathological society then e j butler he is regarded as the father of indian plant pathology he was here in iri new delhi as a imperial uh, plant pathologist then professor n prasad and r prasada they have been associated long with the plant pathological sciences in india and have contributed a lot for the development of the subject classification of plant diseases to facilitate the study of plant diseases it is grouped in uh, some orderly fashion and the plant diseases can grouped as on the basis of symptoms just like rust smut blight etc nature of infection like systemic or localized infection habitat of the pathogens where it is there mode of perpetuation and spread that is in soil and seed affected parts of the host whether it is aerial part or the root types of the plants like cereals pulses oil seeds then infectious diseases we can also classify the diseases on the basis of infectious nature diseases caused by fungi diseases caused by prokaryotes that is bacteria and molecules uh, diseases caused by parasitic plants they are caused by virus and viroids they are caused by nematodes and by certain protozoans likewise uh, non infectious diseases can also be classified as we see here the diseases caused by low or high temperature caused by lack or excess soil water caused by lack or excess light caused by lack of oxygen air pollution nutrient deficiencies and mineral toxicities as we have already seen the examples before and similarly the diseases caused by soil acidity or alkalinity diseases caused by toxicity of pesticides also and caused by improper cultural practices they are also considered under non infectious plant diseases viewers today we learnt about the diseases plant pathological principles koch postulates what are the important areas of plant pathology how we study uh, the plant pathology for uh, developing uh, management techniques and how we also saw certain examples of uh, past uh, epidemics caused by different diseases in different countries we have also seen that certain symptoms of the plant diseases caused by fungi and bacteria secondly we have tried to learn the classification of uh, plant pathogens and how we can better classify plant pathogens for uh, making best use of them to solve our diseases problems uh, and to manage them in a nice way